What was Orsted's experiment? Well, it was incredibly simple. He just put a compass under a wire. Wait, why is that important? And why is that weird? Sounds pretty normal to me. Well, I'll explain in the video. Ready? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. This story begins in 1600. That's when an English doctor determined that static electricity is completely separate from magnetism. Flash forward 200 years when an Italian named Alessandro Volta invented the battery. Suddenly there was renewed interest in finding a connection between electricity and magnetism. It seemed logical. Magnets always have a north and a south and batteries always have a positive and a negative. Still nothing. This brings us to Denmark and a philosopher and scientist named Hans Christian Ørsted, who was a big fan of the philosophy of Immanuel Kant. To Ørsted, Kant's philosophy meant that everything in nature was intertwined, so the forces in physics should also be connected. He was determined to, quote, prove from empirical science how the laws of nature form a rational whole and how nature itself is a revelation of reason. Beginning in 1806, Orsted did everything he could to see if magnets could have an effect on electricity or vice versa. For 14 years, a whole bunch of nothing. Then in the spring of 1820, Orsted put a compass underneath a wire and found that the compass needle turned when the current was running through the wire. Now Orsted knew that a compass is just a small magnet on a pivot. That is why you can make a compass needle move by placing a permanent magnet near it. So if the current in the wire moved the magnet in the compass, that means electrical current creates a magnetic force, not in the battery, but in the current in the wire. Let's go into a little more detail about what Orsted did. Orsted used a battery that was composed of copper and zinc rods in an acid bath. He then placed the compass under a wire in the closed circuit and voila, the magnet in the compass moved. Strangely, the magnet did not move to point with the wire, towards the wire, or away from the wire. No, the magnet moved to point in a circle around the wire. This is why the experiment is so strange. The current flows through the wire and the magnet points around the wire. Think about it, there are no other forces that work like this. Gravity pulls you towards the center of mass. Magnets and static electricity either pull you or push you away. Even directly, pushing or pulling is either towards or away from the person pushing or pulling. But compasses feel a force pushing them into a circle around the wire. No wonder it took Orsted 14 years to discover it. He was putting his compass in the wrong orientation. The other thing that was and is odd about this experiment is that static charges do not move a magnet. Only moving charges do. Okay, that's strange, but why is that important? First, it linked electricity and magnetism, which is fundamental difference in our understanding of both electricity and magnetism. Second, the fact that an external compass moves if there's a current in a wire made it possible to study electricity and magnetism more systematically which led to a profusion of new equations and theories. Months after Orsted published his account, a German scientist wrapped a wire multiple times around a compass to increase the force on the compass and made the first calibrated machine to measure the strength of current. In 1825, another German scientist named George Ohm used this device to determine the relationship between current and the properties of the material that the current runs through, including its temperature. Ohm then created the idea of resistance, which is measured in ohms in his honor. In fact, many of the electrical equations we use today were born in this time period. Third, the relationship between electricity and magnetism started an avalanche of practical electrical devices. Before Orsted, batteries were only used for three things. One, to give small electric Ooh, shocks. Two, to electrically isolate chemicals. And three, to create a bright light that required too many batteries to be practical. Within a dozen years of Orsted's discovery, 
the following devices were invented. The ammeter, the motor, the electromagnet, the transformer, the generator, and even the first practical telegraph. In fact, you can trace back almost all of our electrical devices to this single discovery. It is a big deal. So what did Orsted think of his discovery? Well, he knew it was important. In fact, he had discovered it a month before he published his findings. But the battery was a little weak, so he repeated it with a stronger battery, quote, considering the importance of the subject. Unfortunately, many people who read this thought that Orsted's original experiment was an accident. Therefore, instead of being lauded for fulfilling his 14-year quest, he is most often rumored to have done it by chance. Also, Orsted, like many scientists at the time, was disturbed by the fact that the current goes through the wire and the magnetic force goes in a circle around the wire. It seemed totally illogical to people used to Newton's laws. To solve his problem, he decided that the electricity was really not moving straight down the wire at all. Instead, the electricity was spiraling down the wire and dragging the magnets in a spiral direction too. In England, a lowly and uneducated chemical assistant named Michael Faraday attempted to systematically study Orsted's theory of the spiraling current. Instead, he found that the current wasn't spiraling. It was going straight down the wire, but it was creating a circular force field on the magnets. In return, he also theorized that magnets create a circular force field on current. This was to revolutionize the study of electricity and magnetism and lead to the theories of magnetic fields and electric fields. But why did anyone listen to a lowly chemical assistant? Well, it turned out that Faraday had the experiments to prove his theories. How Michael Faraday created the first electric motor and infuriated his mentor in the process is next time on The Secret History of Electricity. Electricity, 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 electricity. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to give it a nice thumbs up. Also, check out the videos on how the battery was invented and how Michael Faraday became a lowly chemical assistant instead of a lowly bookbinder's apprentice. Also, make sure to check out the next one about how Faraday invented the first electric motor. It's going to be cool. Remember to join my YouTube channel, Kathy Loves Physics, my Facebook page, Kathy Loves Physics, or my website, www.kathylovesphysics.com. Okay, have a nice day.